Council meeting of the Village of Council, Village of Ortonville Council. Uh, it's November 28, 2016, 7 p.m. Uh, let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation, please. <coughs> Tanya? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bow your heads, please. God, we thank, we give you thanks for family time experienced over the recent Thanksgiving holiday and for your safety provided during all of our travels. We are so thankful for your blessings provided during Council's deliberations over the past 12 months. Much has been done, yet there is so much more to do. We are so very thankful for the past faithful service of our departing council members, Debbie and Courtney. Now, according to the will of our voters, we welcome our newest council members, Mark and Karen. And as we move forward on behalf of the Ortonville community, may council proceed with a bold yet unified spirit of cooperation and respect for one another. And when our interests differ, as they sometimes will, Help us to always demonstrate equal measures of charity and understanding for the opinions of others. We humbly ask these things in your almighty name. Amen. 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 I'm going to fall asleep in this chair. <laughs> Roll call, please, Courtney. Eshman? Here. Bryce? Here. Sleva? Yes. Dialis? Present. Fornica? Here. Butsu? Here. Wills? Here. I have an agenda that's before us. <coughs> Do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda <coughs> as presented? If there is none, please signify by make a, make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. <clears throat> motion by Councilman Eshman, supported by Councilman Skornica, to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next on our agenda, we have uh, approval of council meeting minutes from October 24 of motion to approve the council minutes of October 24, 2016 as presented. Support. Motion by Councilman Skornica, supported by Councilman Bryce, to approve the minutes of the October 24, 2016 meeting as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are accepted. Acceptance items under item six. No questions, then we'll move on. Any questions at all? Measures <coughs> report or the Parks and Recs report? Okay. Um, why don't you wait a couple minutes and we'll, we'll pick you up under the public comments. Okay? Okay, we'll, just, we'll do it then. Item seven is disbursements. I have a question about disbursements. Okay, yes, go ahead. Okay, I thought everything looked very uh, good. Uh, the only thing that I am concerned about is um, in the last month's Village Council minutes, there wasn't a total for the amount of disbursements listed. 
and so I'm seeing a total on the um, disbursement report for $19,723.91. And um, I was wondering if we were going to put that total amount on the, you know, on next month's village council report. They typically always are. Well, I didn't see it on this last one. So if you're talking on the meeting minutes, on the meeting minute. Uh, I mean right here where it says yeah. a total of in our minutes. Minute, right. Are you talking about the minutes, Karen? Heard me. The minutes themselves? Yeah, right. I didn't see it in the minutes. Um, well, you can Page hear it. two, the, the forty three disbursements. Right. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, well, I was wondering if we could put it, like, right after when it says disbursements, we could give the, put the total there. So it's just a suggestion. Oh, after the title disbursements? Yeah. I think it's got to be in the motion. Does it have to? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's, gonna... that, that's the motion that's made to say the amount. Okay. okay. It's just difficult to find those disbursement numbers. That's all. All right. Hmm. I have no other questions. I hadn't realized that before, but it, but it, it's, it's included in the motion under disbursements. It's yeah. just, I mean, do you want to? Okay, no, no, no. I, it I is a little difficult to find, so just a suggestion. But it is right below that, under disbursements. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you for bringing that up. question on 39 and 40 the two water tests um, for the old town hall in the office oh never mind I just never mind one's bacterial one's chemical Just a <clears throat> point of clarification on number 28. We, we asked for and did receive a somewhat of a breakdown in our legal fees between the medical marijuana issue and the other legal action that's in process. Uh, and I thought that we were going to be pre uh, always discussing the, that item that's in legal issue by street address and not by the owner's name. <clears throat> so under under disbursement, under that disbursement, we need to make sure that we do that from here on out. Which technically it reads as 144 South Street. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. I make a motion that we approve our disbursements uh, dated for uh, today's meeting, November 28th, totaling $19,723.91. Support? <clears throat> motion by Councilman Eshman, supported by Council. And Dylas to pay our bills in the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars and ninety-one cents. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote, please, Courtney. Bryce, yes. Sleva, yes. Dylas, yes. Skornica, yes. Butsu, yes. Ashman, yes. Wills, yes. Motion is carried to pay our bills in the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars and ninety-one cents. 
<clears throat> item eight under our agenda is items from trustees. <clears throat> Let's start down on my right. <clears throat> um, no news. No, no, no new news on the uh, streets. Okay. Uh, nothing to report for recreation. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. <laughs> Colleen. Okay. The personnel committee, along with the village manager, is in the process of completing evaluations for a clerk position to fill that position and it's my understanding that there are two applicants that are going to be uh, interviewed uh, as soon as possible <coughs> to, to get that finalized and then that will come back to council for council's final approval okay uh, Moving on then, uh, item nine, public comment. Fred, if you'd like to state your name and. <clears throat> Fred Waybrandt, uh, Director of Parks and Recreation for the Charter Township of Brandon. Um, on my rec report, and I'm sorry I interrupted because with the township, when a rec report comes up, I can add or discuss it with the, with the board at that time. But on the rec report, I'm not sure, because I don't have it in front of me, I apologize. But is that the one where I'm um, listing the usage of Sherman Village Park, or is that just my rec report? Of what went on? It does list the usage of Sherman Park? It does? Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that said, um, is this something that's got to be approved by the council, or is that just a... You know, for, the, for, the, for Mark and Karen, we use a Village Park for our... Baseball, softball program, basketball courts, concession stands, tournaments, uh, you know, odds and ends, things. I really like Sherman Park. It's very, very nice. The village keeps it up real well, and the parents of the community appreciate it <coughs> as well. So is this, Wayne, something I got to get approved? Is it just accept you, the acceptance that you just did is the go ahead? Yeah, I'd say that that's, uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Council, you see any problem with that? No. To the contrary? Nope. No. But he, he is talking about the adding more programs, though, right? Isn't <coughs> that what this memo states about the, the senior softball program? Yeah, if we can't, I'm going to talk to uh, Ned about that, like a Sunday program to get 50. It's a 50 and over, basically. But the, the usage of the fields <coughs> is not actually affected, though. Is that correct? No. I mean, there's still going to be lights on at night in the summertime until 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock is curfew, yes, sir. Yeah. So. Sometimes they're 10, 15 because people dog it getting out of there. But right. and nothing's really changed. Trying to bring some senior activities on site. Um, one thing that will uh, bring to your attention is uh, I'm not sure who the village resident is behind the senior center, but believe it or not, there's balls that go into his yard. It was hitting his camper at one time. He moved it, and him and I discussed. And I can't think of his name, but to put a, a fencing up, like a netting, to keep the balls in, on the property. So I don't know if that's, who owns that land? Is that township, that's village, the senior center property? Is that, is that gotta be okay? It's a good question, I'm not 100% sure. I know that the building maintenance and anything having to do with the building is handled by the township. Okay. The property on which the, you're talking about the ball field. Yeah. To the north of the actual building. Yeah is but the ball field is the village well then I think then it would fall in the under the village jurisdiction all right so i'll bring i got a sketch and what i plan on doing there and i'll bring that to you i just think for future reference and correct me if i'm wrong other council members but i think it'd just be a a good public relations move to keep us informed yep. yeah you'll be as seeing as a any possible report. changes yeah. in usage Yep, anytime that, uh, usages especially. Yep, anytime I'm going to do anything in the village, I'd be sure to get your acceptance on that. 
Sure. Um, so just Fred, one other question yeah. in that regard. So <coughs> it's been some years since my sons or boys played ball on that field. But if I remember correctly, they were only about four or five years old when they were playing there. Um, what are the age groups that are playing in that park now to where they can hit it over the fence? Uh, that's machine. We do a machine pitch over there because we oh, get so abundant. Yeah, we actually uh, had an electrician put underground wiring to the pitcher's mound, and it's hooked up to the senior center as far as power. There's years that we have over the abundance of teams for the machine pitch, and because we don't have baseball fields at the township park, these things are going all the time. So we had to add a pitching machine and sometimes we try to keep the boys off that side but sometimes a girl will get a hold of one and then uh when we ring in that softball or the baseball tournaments for u8 boys it's on memorial day weekend it's a travel program <coughs> they can hit them out pretty good so sure. that was the main reason right there those kids they do a home run derby and we put up uh fencing at the time it helped and we did it in the parking lot of the dpw as well that T-ball field there as well. So the T-ball basically is three to five-year-olds is what we've been. We have a beginning so baseball thought, yeah. that we we have the three-year-olds. But we had to add the pitch machine. The next thing we know, is they're going over the fence. Have you given any thought to <coughs> having a removable or a like they do in the football <coughs> end zones? They, they have the a netting goes net up. that goes up and down. Actually, it should be less expensive than having a 10-foot fence I would think yep, that they actually designed what I plan on doing which I'll get t for your approval is um, their flag posts every 12 foot or something and they have the pulley and so you just pulled it up and put her down it's a stationary thing I've talked to uh, Bob from the DPW about it as well <coughs> uh, that's about as far as I got with it the other thing I wanted to mention too the DNR passport grant uh, we scored 245 points I have not heard if we are going to receive that grant or not but 245 points is actually pretty good points uh, so we'll it should be any time i hear something on that to, for you guys that know not sure about the passport grant that's your money that you pay the state park to get your yearly pass on your license plate we applied for a twenty-five thousand dollar grant matching with the village and the township partnering up with a match and that's to rebuild the concession stand it's in very, very need. And the only way you can qualify if your park is 50 years old or, or older. So the village qualified pretty good on that. So we'll see how that comes out. So that's how many points you said? We had 245 points. And I think uh, what is that we, we're over 50%, so that's good. What, how does it, a point equate to a dollar uh, of grant recipient? Well, it's recipient. just the points are like what's environmental about the place you know and we said well Kersley Creek is right down the across the street basically uh, what's the what what's the need you know well the need is we run three-year-olds through 12-year-olds uh, down at the park we we give the numbers of the ball players with 600 600 kids are playing at Sherman Park those kind of things and uh, I mean I don't have it in front of me but what's what's the <coughs> um, citizens income in the area things like that so it's all about you get so many points for for the need and uh, those kind of things I mean they ask about what's the landscape around here or is it environmental safe was there every gas stations there and no there wasn't no gas station so we get points for that we got points for never applying for one <laughs> so there's those kind of things so again does that qualify or does that equate to a point not to dollars. To a no. dollar? No. You can, we could have 245 <laughs> is what we got, and somebody could have uh, 290, and we'll both get the same amount of money. Depends on what they apply the for. maximum amount of the grant is 25, capped 000. at 25000 per any recipient? No, it's capped at forty, but we went for 25 because that's all we needed. Okay. So somebody could get you know, a lot more points, and we still get the same amount of money. It depends on what they applied for. Okay. Okay. I think that's all I have. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Fred. Any other public comments?
Hearing none, we'll move on to old business. Item 10 on our agenda. Revisiting the smart municipal credit and community credit contract, which was tabled from the October 24 meeting. There was a question as to how that can be, <coughs> that grant could be perhaps controlled from our end. And this motion suggests that that is one way of doing it. <coughs> I think there was some concern that we wanted that uh, those funds to perhaps go to actual senior citizen transportation and not to uh, children's ski club transportation, for example. And this is one, is this uh, a recommendation that you've come up with, Dave? Yes, uh, Mr. President, based on the discussion that the council had last <laughs> month, uh, I touched base with Brandon Township and they supplied uh, one of their quarterly reports that show that there's uh, quite a bit of money that is expensed toward uh, the senior center and for transportation. Uh, it's the uh, pleasure of this council. They want to dictate where that $1,406 goes, whether it's directly to the senior center for transportation or if you want to divide it up uh, or give it completely to the recreation department, which has been uh, uh, the practice in the past. <clears throat> based on conversation I had with uh, one of the council members who was uh, proposing that maybe we should investigate the senior center. Uh, this is a uh, splitting uh, the difference, so to speak, and do a 50-50. And the money that would be uh, so-called so lost to the rec department, the 50% that is in front of us at the moment, uh, I think you indicated in the conversation that there's enough money uh, the township's coffer to easily cover that? That's right. It would just be a bookkeeping entry on their end to make sure that the recreation department is adequately funded. Okay. Okay. So you have a suggested motion in front of you. I would like to make a motion to approve the transfer of the 2016-17 smart credit. <laughs> $1,406 to the Brandon Township with 50% allocated to the Recreation Department and 50% allocated to the Senior Center Transportation. Support. <coughs> so we have a motion by Councilman Bryce and supported by Councilman Ishman. Is there any discussion on the motion as presented? <coughs> Since this is uh, more of an allocation and not a total amount that we're expending, uh, we'll just go with a standard vote. So all those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. <coughs> mm. Item number 11 on our agenda is new business. David, would you explain this a little bit? I think it's just a housekeeping <coughs> issue as I understand it. Is that correct? And you summed it up uh, perfectly well, Mr. President. Uh, it's uh, with the transition of village managers this year, Act 51 requires us to designate an administrator for streets. And this is uh, the basic resolution that's put together by the state and we just fill in the blanks. the recommended motion before you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution designating David Trent, village manager, as administrator designated by the village of Ortonville, who shall represent the municipality in transactions with the state transportation department pursuant to section 13.9 of Act 51, Public Acts, 19, Public Acts of 1951. Support. We have a motion by Councilman Skornica, supported by Councilman Eschman, to approve David Trent as the 
administrator. With respect to streets, <coughs> motion as read. I will not read it again because it's too lengthy. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd like to ask, does this form here need to be filled out then? I mean, uh, we have the form do that. Is that the same? Yeah, we'll, we'll fill in the blanks yeah, accordingly. Okay. Okay. That's just your copy. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Welcome, David. You are now the new street administrator. Love the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> under new business, uh, under uh, item 11B, we have a resolution regarding medical marijuana facilities. Would you elaborate a little bit, please, David? Certainly. Uh, last month, uh, the council was uh, given an opinion letter by legal counsel that summarized the uh, revised law that the state legislature passed regarding medical marijuana facilities and dispensaries. And it's the recommendation of legal counsel, and uh, I support his recommendation that uh, counsel take a formal uh, act uh, regarding the resolution before you tonight. Uh, there's nothing in the state law that requires uh, any municipality to take action if there is no ordinance that has been approved that authorizes the establishment of medical <coughs> marijuana facilities and dispensaries within a municipality. <clears throat> However, legal counsel does recommend that uh, we <coughs> take a stance one way or the other, and in this case, uh, the recommendation is to um, indicate that we will not allow or prohibit those to exist within the boundaries of the village. One of the items that came up during your discussion last month uh, that was uh, in injected by uh, interim manager John Lyons was uh, that there's very little space within the community where uh, one of these could be located and we've provided a colored map that shows uh, how much of the village would uh, not be allowed to have uh, one located within those parameters. So you can see it's uh, pretty much just uh, some of the residential areas within the village that would even be uh, allowed to have something of that nature set up. this was up. just based on distance from schools and churches? <clears throat> distance from the schools, churches, and other regulated uses, uh, such as the village pub. So looking at this map here, I could have neighbors uh, to have a dispensary. But you cannot, because it's residential. It's not colored here. But you cannot. Ha it's not a licensed, res or licensed facility. You can be a caregiver, but not a licensed facility in a residential area, according to the state law. <clears throat> If that's the case, then I don't understand why some of these other areas haven't been uh, designated. Because this is just purely based off of schools, churches, and bars, things like that. Okay. And then when you look and narrow down, I don't, that may be residential because that's a duplex. Or no, that's across the street. There's only, I believe, Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong, John said there's like five properties in the whole village that could even be a possibility. Well, from the, from this <laughs> Schematic here looks like there's more than that. It does. <laughs> but they're they're going to be primarily located uh, in the vicinity of uh, Naron and M15 and up through half of the pet supply, pl oh, pet supply building. And then probably Jet's Pizza building and right. that would be about it. Those would be the, uh, the M1s and the RM. What about the B2 in the lower left corner by Granger? Could be. So as John Lyons has indicated, there, there's only a handful of yeah, yeah. possible locales. <clears throat> 
such an operation could be established. But this motion, uh, as presented, uh, would uh, not authorize any facility to operate, period. And what we were given was a recommendation of somebody who reached out to all the municipalities that you have an option to do something. If you do not, you may choose to do what you're already doing or you may choose to do a combination of the above. So it was not recommended to us, it was offered to us by somebody who would love to draw this up for us and, I, and I'm concerned about that being an opportunity for them to reach out to the communities to feel like we should do it because we're not educated as to <coughs> what it all entails. And jumping to the gun and doing something permanent I think before we know. What, to me what's confusing to me is the motion suggests that we're not to authorize any licensed medical marijuana facility to operate within the boundaries of the village of Whartonville. That's very clear, but the map itself shows that there's possibilities that there right. we could be. Right, we resolve to say that we do not want to allow that. Yeah, this is, our council would make a decision that we don't want any, period, regardless of what uh, the allowance would, uh, would offer. Looks like we might have half a dozen, like as John Lyons mentioned, mm -hmm. but uh, I move to approve the resolution not to authorize any licensed medical marijuana facilities to operate within the boundaries of the village of Ortonville. Support. Motion by Councilman Wills, supported by Councilman Skornica. <clears throat> any further questions? Discussion? <coughs> Did anybody get a chance to read in the review this week for the medical marijuana information based on the state laws and everything? Very good information. I did not. And that's not to say that uh, a council in the future could change their mind and do something to the contrary. For right now, that's my, I stand on my motion, and uh, it's been supported. Any further discussion, discussions, questions? Since this is a resolution, we are required by, by our uh, charter to have a roll call vote. Thank you, Courtney. Sleva? Yes. Dylas? Yes. Skornica? Yes. Butsu? Yes. Ashman? Yes. Bryce? No. Wills? Yes. I'll let the record show the motion carried 6 1. Under new business, item 11C, Groveland Use Assistance. Youth assistance. I make a motion to approve the allocation of $1,500 to the Brandon Groveland Youth Assistance from line item 101.299.885.000. Support. Motion by Councilman Dylas, supported by Councilman Skornica, to approve the allocation of $1,500 to the Brandon Groveland Youth Assistance from line item 
101.299.885.000. Discussion? I have a question. What is that line item? That is uh, That's the name of It is a Okay, thank you. And the only question I have, I guess, is if we have it budgeted and it's below a certain dollar amount, why do we have to uh, approve it for as a council? Good question. Because we don't have a policy for those items yet. <laughs> We're working on that. Below that line item number amount. <laughs> It's an expenditure that <coughs> has to be approved by council. <coughs> but it is a line item on our general budget, so. Can you approve it from the monthly disbursements? Yeah, I, I think that uh, once we approve our impending, Sorry. Im impending you disbursement uh, rules and regs, I think that that will be. Okay become eventually a moot point then. Okay. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. <coughs> Dylas? Yes. Skornica? Yes. Budstu? Yes. Ashman? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Leva? Yes. Wills? Yes. Motion is carried. Item D under new business, we have a Trade permit presented by the Brandon Township Parks and Recs Department for Christmas in a Village. <coughs> I have a question, Fred. Uh, looks like to me when <coughs> The diagram was filled out on the back side. The diagram is incorrect. Uh, it looks like the diagram has the prey going down Cedar Street. No. And, uh, That's in yellow. Okay. And red is where it typically goes down yeah, Church Street. It's the same route as always. I did, I did, I'm sorry, but I didn't do that. But, um, Just a point I of clarification. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's the same route as always if okay. for those that know it. Thank you, Fred. I would like to make a motion to approve the permit for the Christmas parade. Sponsored by the Brandon Township Parks and Rec Department for December 3rd, 2016. Support. We have a motion by Councilman Bryce, supported by Councilman Vilas, to approve the request for a parade permit from the Brandon Township Parks and Rec Department for the parade to be held this coming Saturday, December 3rd, 2016 beginning at 3 p.m. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Item 12 on our agenda is public comments <coughs> on non-agenda items. So this could be anything from, <coughs> anything from soup to nuts if you want to Address the council, step up to the microphone, state your name. Hello, my name is Karen North. My family has a farm over on Homer Lake Road, so I hope I'm at the right place. Um, I was just sent here by your local town police because I've had some incidences involving my neighbors on the back side of our farm where they are shooting at us. <laughs> and um, I've had this address over the year um, with the police department and they told me to come here and ask you what um what's going on with that and wh what your plans are and if there's any ordinances for rifle laws in place which I'm really kind of upset about because my whole life I've been friendly with all my neighbors and all my family's known everyone around us my entire life 
Um, I moved away and came back, and <laughs> things are a little different. And uh, I'm, I'm a huge Second Amendment supporter. I really am. But when I, you know, I'm shot at by my neighbors, I'm a little bit scared for my life. <laughs> and I've addressed it with my neighbor, and he um, does not seem to be afraid of the cops or doesn't seem to care that, you know, he, he doesn't seem to know how to safely handle his rifle, <laughs> which is kind of unfortunate for me. So I was just kind of coming here to see what what I could help you do or how I could uh, be what involved. What is your address again? It's 4641 Hummer Lake Road. Are you outside of the village limits? Yeah, am I in the wrong place? You are. Oh, come on. You I know I didn't recognize your names. This is the right, <laughs> the right, the right room, but the, okay, wrong, the wrong board and the wrong day. I've been moved away for a while. It's next Monday. Next Monday is the township mm -hmm. meeting. Good see, practice. See, now oh, the good practice. Thank you. The I've only been in out. front of a few boards. <laughs> next Monday, this room, 7 p.m. Okay. Right here. All right. We'll be there. I didn't think I recognized your name, but <laughs> I know I voted, so, you know. <laughs> Good All right. Question, though. Well, I'm, that, I'm sorry. That I mean, I don't. Serious, uh, no, no need to apologize. Okay, is that going on? I mean, I know I saw it in the paper that Atlas, the township supervisor there, got shot at recently. Uh, you know, and straight I, bullet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty much what it was. Whatever. But, you know, it's still the safety of my family and all those involved. And, I mean, we have a farm, so I should have the right to go on it. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I know that's probably an issue that you're dealing with in, in the township, too. So, yeah, yes, just, a, just an FYI, uh, if you happen to move into the village, no firearms are allowed at all in the village. Oh, okay. So I couldn't just, even, uh, like, open carry. Just bow, and you can bow hunt, though. All right. Well, I mean, it's getting kind of rural around here, so, yeah. I mean, you know, but... All right. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. If I see you around, at least I'll know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Fred Waybrandt. I don't know. It's about two or three village council meetings ago. We talked about uh, the permit, the, not necessarily the parade, but just that permit in general. And I was wondering if the council has an objective, if I take a look at that thing and renovate it a little bit because it the actual permit form yeah seems like there was some discussion by one or two of the council members that they wanted to update that yeah i have some ideas if it's okay if i bring it to the council i think at that time it might have been a copy of a copy and the clarity was very poor on the application and i think that's what we were discussing is no, there was something more. Yeah, than that. some other information. That, it was as well. that and, and the relevant information. And, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. For specific events that the the Parks and Rec Department holds, the permit, the parade permit is not complete enough for their needs. Yeah, it's not. Okay. Parks and Rec friendly, but we know we know as the council and as the township what goes on in this town. You can actually list some of the things, some of the items, make circle it, but. I got some ideas if it's okay if I go ahead and bring that to maybe to your January meeting or something. Sure. Okay. By all means. If you want to just send it to David and he can send it out to everybody sure. and get a chance to look I'd at it, that'd be great. <clears throat> that'd be a good idea. I'll just go <laughs> through the village manager. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rod. Yeah, particularly with respect to street closures, uh, we could add another question, like num question number 9A or 11 that deal specifically with street closures because that's always a contentious issue with some business owners as to the specific amount of time and when the closure would start when it would stop if it's more than one day <coughs> no. that would give you a little bit more room to elaborate uh, one other thing it just reminded me of it's not it's not on the agenda but I will get with the village manager then we could actually before that gets approved you know the board take a look at it the other item was uh the skate park this uh i know i asked for approval but we were we talked a few meetings ago that we might be able to get a committee together of the council or some village residents and and uh discuss my approach to programs down there and see if that's going to work for everybody <coughs> is that still well we have had a a liaison from my to a parks and recs committee of some kind in the past in the past and that kind of went wayside a little bit and I, I know what your application but you got to remember that the application is gone because the program never went and that was ran through the village now I'm proposing 
a program to be run through the Parks and Rec Department. It's the punch card idea, all that kind of stuff. So is the council still interested in setting down with me with some of the members to go through that, or am I just going to bring it to you and you guys give the okay or, or not? Well, we have we have a standing subcommittee oh, that is uh, and I Councilman Bryce. Be happy to be there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I'll get with you. If anybody else would like to, yes. But I would be happy to be there if I'm available. Okay. Sounds good. Thank Thanks you. Thanks again. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> <clears throat> you. Seeing no one else, we'll move on then to item 13 on our agenda. Items from the village manager. David. Thank you. I wanted to uh, just update the council on some of the um, major initiatives that I've been undertaking since uh, coming on last month. Uh, I've provided a summary of some of the uh, projects that the uh, council approved in the past to uh, give you an update on uh, the uh, scanning of our building department prints is supposed to be completed uh, this week and they'll be providing training to our staff on the digital files that are being compiled from that. Uh, next week we'll be reviewing the signed ordinance with the Planning Commission and uh, had a discussion last week with Enviro Assist. They have not uh, commenced uh, any work on the project that this council approved back in September. Part of the reason for that is that uh, they were waiting for the scanning project of the building <coughs> department files to be completed. And then also uh, I came to realize in my discussion with them that they need some information from our assessor uh, <coughs> through the township. And so I've got a meeting set up with Kim Feigley next week to um, <coughs> help her develop the report that EnviroAssist needs so that we can bring those together. EnviroAssist says they'll need about six weeks to do their analysis, and we're hoping that they can come to the January meeting to uh, make a formal presentation and give us the report on that, uh, that project. The um, 144 South Street uh, issue will be, uh, we'll have a court hearing on December 12th that was postponed from uh, this week. Also, I've had the chance to meet with our uh, engineers from Roe, and also uh, before his departure, John Lyons and I had a, a roundtable discussion with uh, the folks from Roe regarding uh, the you know, septic and sewer issue. And uh, I've had a number of meetings with state and uh, congressional leaders uh, on that particular topic. I've got meetings set up with county officials next month to just investigate and let them know that uh, we're interested in being at the top of the list if there's any uh, funding opportunities, especially in the way of grants that uh, come out of the uh, national election where President Trump has indicated that he's uh, planning on investing in lots of infrastructure. And if that's the case, we'll find out uh, how much money will be allocated for infrastructure needs and uh, whether or not anything in the realm of uh, providing funding for a wastewater treatment plant uh, could be part of the opportunities for us as we move forward in that realm. So that would be uh, funding of uh, in the tune of $20 million we'd be able to get? Well, we've got our fingers crossed. <laughs> you never know unless you ask. So I'm asking and I'm making sure that our representatives <coughs> know of our uh, issues, our needs and concerns, and whether or not uh, funding might be available for that type of project. So it's all in the discussion stage right now until those new officials take office next month or in January. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, I, I know personally <coughs> of uh, developers that were seeking uh, some of the stimulus monies back in 2009 before President Obama had even taken office just because there was the discussion of uh, investing in shovel-ready projects. Of course, it turned out there wasn't very many shovel-ready projects available, 
but uh, you know we have something that's really on paper at this point that can be expanded uh, depending on what type of monies might be available for grant opportunities down the road. Okay, so I just so want to historically, and I've heard, I've had people uh, talk to me about uh, sewers. We all know how how big of a topic that was not too long ago, and um, uh, I I do know that there are residents out there that that are concerned that we're reopening sewers all over again after the community voted. So it's important that when we talk sewers, you're talking about funding, significant funding, because that's what they voted down was the significant cost of a sewer program um, as it relates to the burden on each one of our residents. So um, it's important that we understand what we mean when we're talking uh, sewers all over again as to what it was described to me. <clears throat> I uh, appreciate that comment, uh, Trustee Eshman, and uh, I have uh, uh, heard that similar feedback from many, many folks uh, in the short time that I've been here in Ortonville. And my, uh, my desire is to try to build a regional uh, approach to a septic or to a, a sewer system and, uh, and combine that with uh, subsidies from either the federal or state level to make it more palatable, whatever that final number might be. So until we you know, find out if there's funding opportunities available and we have uh, some uh, coordination between the township and the school district and the M15 corridor until all those come together and realistically I, I think we're looking at something that's two years down the pike before we'd even have something uh, you know that would be presented to this council for your deliberation but I just wanted to let you know that uh, you know I've made the initial contacts and people are aware of my desire to try to build a regional approach to this issue because that, that realistically from a financial standpoint that's the only way we'll probably get the necessary funding that we would need to have to take <coughs> care of something that's in the 20 million dollar price range I have a question um, so I'm gathering from what you're saying then you're talking about getting a significant amount of grant money um, to fund the sewers but it sounds like as there's probably going to still have to be special assessment levies included in you know to pay for the sewers potentially potentially but not and necessarily <laughs> I don't know until we find out the, the details down the road that's a, that's an unknown part of the equation okay okay that's it that was my only question about special assessment levies <clears throat> Moving on to the subject of roads, uh, I wanted to let the, uh, the council know that uh, one of the goals that uh, I have set out is to try to develop a 10-year road maintenance plan with our DPW supervisor. We hope to have that to you sometime in the spring. <coughs> and also, you're well aware of the Cedar Street project that uh, was completed this past year with the scrap tire grant. Uh, that grant is available again for next year. The initial application deadline to show interest is December 9th and would require an investment of $500 to our engineer uh, where they would do the calculations on what the cost would be for that project. Uh, I have asked them to, uh, to do that and uh, what I would like to try to accomplish is completing the rest of Cedar Street from where it was uh, completed this past summer or the, actually the fall and then also do schoolhouse because it's right next door to it I figure it's a good way to get the best bang for our buck with the crew being there uh, completing cedar and then just do schoolhouse and I think it's a it's a, it's a good amenity for the community because of <coughs> all the traffic around the ball diamonds and the senior center so I think it could be a win-win situation if we tackle both of those streets for this next year And again, that's $500 just to have the engineers look at the feasibility. Right, and calculate the cost for, because part of the initial application or letter of interest is you have to indicate how much money you're planning on asking for. And the only way they can calculate that is to actually do the analysis of 
what, what what's a projected cost to to do that? We can't use the cost per the total cost divided by the length of the current road that we you know come up with a cost per cost per lineal foot and just do the math ourselves. Well, uh, <laughs> or do we have to do some other there's ditching and? <clears throat> yeah, there, there's other uh, work that's involved with that. And did I curbing work <gasps> or whatever? Yeah. Right. Uh, there's uh, you know, uh, sidewalks that are impacted, uh, driveways. Uh, so they they've calculated what the, those costs are for each each road. Yeah. We do have some kind of a funky little sidewalk route along. Cedar Street from mm -hmm. from Mill Street to Ball Street, and so they they've calculated some very preliminary <coughs> costs to, to do each of those <coughs> sections of road, but uh, until it actually goes out for bid, you know we don't know what the actual cost would be. But you know, these are preliminary costs, and then uh, if we uh, <coughs> if the uh, state or transportation <coughs> gives us approval we can actually uh, submit a, a specific application for, for the grant next year how much that so how much that grant cover last year for cedar street was it cedar about seventy five thousand dollars today while you're on topic of roads um and i know you're you're fairly new Mill Street up the hill, halfway up the hill, right up in front of my house, is the road is virtually just crumbling apart. There was a significant patchwork done over the summer, and yet there's the continued uh, asphalt uh, just basically pulling away and, and uh, crumbling. Uh, that is a very high, what I'll call major street. Um, I know we're talking about side streets here, but I, I strongly recommend you looking at <clears throat> Mill Street. Uh, Halfway up the hill, where it's it's just uh, literally crumbling apart up there. And and if you haven't looked at it, then I suggest you should go take a look at it. Now, is there some tie-in to the <coughs> scrap tire grant to be a uh, non-major street? Do you know? I would have to check into that. I don't know. And if that's a grant situation, uh, we could probably move to your point. We could probably move some other funds. To cover the Mill Street project, well, we could actually look at perhaps doing multiple projects. <clears throat> the problem with Mill Street, though, it was much more than just paving. Though it was some serious well, infrastructure needed to be done underneath the road to to fix it. deal with water <coughs> issues, right? And that's are just going to say you can't put the money into it until that's fixed because it's going to keep <coughs> doing it. Yeah, so that's a large investment. I remember John talking about, I don't know what the numbers were, but they were talking about a very large investment. Well, like half a million dollars? Yeah, some large number. It's and I thought dollars. a while back ago we did, <coughs> excuse me, approve of somewhere in a tune of $2,000 for some bore sampling to be done to try to identify where those water sources are. And I, I'm not sure that we even received the results from that. They said there was nothing they could do, and they withdrew their option to help and said they could not handle that. So there was no Correct. sampling done? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But yet. They did, and they said there was nothing. That, there was such a big project, they could not hand, they were capable their scope. of handling it. Thank you. But yet the water problem was, appears to be somewhat abated over the last six months, does it not? Well, so far, we're not sure why, though. <laughs> well, because <laughs> they've, got a, they've got a flush and a back flush system working was that the biggest and they've issue got a the sock. Clog? They've got a, a, a straining sock that they're. It's almost like a strainer that you put on the, the exhaust hose into your laundry tub from your washing machine. You got that type of a strainer sock, and then they're going back and forth, uh, reversing that plugging factor, and it seems to be working. I guess I don't, I don't know. I don't know the details on what, what they've done to help alleviate that. Okay. Is that our DPW doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With uh, quarterly, they're they're hiring a a firm that puts a jet into that and cleans out the straining sock from two different directions, mm. and it's, it appears to be working. So that would be under the road drain or the alongside road. the drain? under the road. 
under the road. Both. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it that on a, about a quarterly mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. what's, the fee, what's the fee for that? I, I have no know. idea. I mean, we haven't seen it in our disbursements, like to recognize something like that. I don't know. Yeah. We could I'll ask. Uh, I'll, I'll be Bob. checking with Bob. Bob. Bob well, I know Bob, Bob gave me a tour of that area and mm -hmm. kind of described some of the uh, activity that went on to try to resolve the problem or alleviate the problem. And I, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing work in progress because of the nature of the underground water issue mm -hmm. and that uh, I think is going to require some monitoring. And this winter season will be uh, the key as to whether or not. You know, we have uh, icing issues that I've heard right. has been the norm in the past, and we'll see if, um, you know, okay. we, we've been able to make an impact in that area. But even beyond that, if you go, <clears throat> if you were to start your project, let's say, at or near the entrance to Crescent Hill, and then go all the way to the village line, that hunk of, of, of Mill Street is absolutely terrible. Yeah. It's horrific. And also, at the bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. it's horrific. And at the top. So in between, it's not all that bad. And we can take our funds and do a two short parts of that street. Because at the bottom of the hill, <clears throat> I'm not so sure that the water issue is a factor. Yeah, I would think it would be. Because you got it draining. <coughs> you got the water draining into that drain, and then it comes and it goes south. 90 degrees between the brown wooden house. But you come down the hill and you have to go back up a little bit, so you have that little well right there, and that little well right there is right where all the roads all. So that's, that's water. Yeah, to my but knowledge. But at the top of the hill, <coughs> that's not a factor. Correct. That's probably just bad so, application. I mean, the point is, is that the point is you don't have to do an entire street from one end to the other. That's my point. We saw that, we saw that on Church Street where, where John just took a four foot wide section of along the shoulder and did a piece that was like 200 feet long and it helped immeasurably on Church Street to the to the north end of it. <coughs> but I believe the road work that was done on Mill Street going up the hill stopped just prior to my driveway and where that stopped going further up the hill the road is just deteriorating and I don't know if there's water <coughs> coming out I've never seen water come out of the road there but the road is just falling apart there yeah and, and so you know can one just stop if you're concerned about the, the actual water issue in that actual specific location where the stones are on the right of way and leave that alone but you can go up the hill and keep going all the way to the all the way to the village line and and that definitely needs it badly I just wanted to comment when you're on no, there's, those, are, those are good comments Thank you, Dan. Now, yeah, appreciate the feedback. On the uh, subject of uh, trails, uh, again, working with Roe, uh, there's uh, grant opportunities, again, for the Iron Bell. It's my understanding that uh, we haven't been able to uh, uh, receive any grant monies for that project, and uh, part of it's tied in with trying to interface with our friends from the township on uh, figuring out where they want uh, trails to be uh, located within their area. But, uh, you know, we'll continue to have the discussion with those folks, and uh, there's grant opportunities, again, that we can apply for uh, at the beginning of next year. And I'll uh, update, update the council at our next meeting on those opportunities. And then one, one question to that. Have they <coughs> finalized a route yet? Um, probably not. I think that's part of the dilemma, but we're... They've you know. actually denied all four projected routes. <laughs> they were denied? Based on the residents coming in, feedback, and, mm -hmm. and then the tour of the properties. and Nobody the wants it in their backyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with that, you know, we'll, we'll look at what opportunities exist for providing walkability and trails within our own village boundaries at, at this juncture. And... Uh, try to develop them in such a way that, you know, if the township ever moves forward and tries to take advantage of grant money so that they could connect in with us. And, you know, John, uh, John <coughs> Lyons, uh, you know, that was one of his pet projects and he, you know, laid out a very uh, discreet plan on how to accomplish that within the, the boundaries of 
the village. And if that has not been shared with you folks in the past, and especially with two new council <coughs> members coming on board, uh, that would be a good topic for us to include in uh, next month's board package or the one in January when we talk about trails. And then uh, I provided a letter to you for your... Uh, I, I have a <coughs> question that I could segue a little bit off of the uh, walkability. Uh, it, it's nice that you've been uh, proactive with the 10-year plan for the road <coughs> maintenance. Um, had you given any thought yet to developing a 10-year plan for future sidewalk development? Areas that don't have any sidewalks at all? Uh, because I think that there have been some pretty patient people in our community that have waited for many years for sidewalk development uh, down several roads that are not major roads, but yet some of them that are major roads. Uh, and <clears throat> one of the things that I would like to see individually, perhaps anybody else could, could jump in on this, would be to have some kind of a plan where each year we could bite off so many sections of, of development <clears throat> of sidewalk. Well, to that point, Mr. President, if my, if my understanding is correct from uh, information that Mr. Lyons shared with me before his departure, was that uh, this council has uh, made a decision uh, as far as our, this year's budget to allocate a substantial amount of funds towards sidewalks, $40,000 to be specific. And I think uh, the direction of the council was that that was uh, intended to be uh, an intermediate goal, if you will, where there were going to be tens of thousands of dollars put into next year's budget and the year after as well, too. And so... To that point, uh, I alluded to it slightly in my report, is that I've asked uh, our friends from Rowe Engineering to try to get creative with the grant opportunities, uh, tying it in with trails and walkability to see if we can augment the $40,000 that's in this year's budget and try to tie it in with <clears throat> subsidizing or augmenting uh, that investment in sidewalks and try to connect it in with walkability and trails and that's you know something that's just we've had the initial discussion and we don't have any feedback at this point but but when you talk about a 10-year plan mr president uh that's something i'm certainly willing to you know take under uh task here and yeah the iron barrel work on that type of plan sounds like to me the iron bell trail may not happen for two or three decades who knows <laughs> uh, but in the meantime we have a rightful concern uh, on the part of a lot of our citizens that they like to have some safety uh, issues where they could walk, their kids could walk and ride their bikes. <coughs> I'd like to see a priority set up of uh, <coughs> short, medium, long term. And whatever amount the <coughs> council <coughs> wants to put into it <coughs> each fiscal year, then we'll do it. Fight off a little bit each each year. It's my only comment. <clears throat> and going back to Rose for just a moment, uh, this discussion jogged my memory. I found out this afternoon <clears throat> that uh, Oakland County Road Commission has designated Oakwood between Lease and Baldwin to be a major project for next year. And then in 2018, <clears throat> the remainder of Oakwood from Lease to M15 uh, they found monies to be able to do that project the year after. So I know one of the things that uh, John Lyons had been working on was trying to do a, a shoulder project on Oakwood. Uh, we may have to wait till 2018 to try to coordinate that where we might get a better bang for our buck and maybe uh, have less cost on our budget if we tackle that project in 18 since it's been identified as a future project. I just found that out this afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I have a comment going along that route, I guess. Um, one of the large concerns for the shoulder project was getting access to uh, the shopping center by Beakey's there um, because there is no other access 
to that besides either M15 or Oakwood. So that was a large driving factor of the shoulder project was, was to help with access to that. Um, but we have our piece of property that we had purchased for the uh, sewer plant. So we have, there's that piece of property, and then between that piece of property and Beakey's, there is one piece of property that <coughs> that that back end of their property, I don't know how useful that is and, and how much they'd be willing to sell a small portion of that piece of property for. We only need like 12 feet of it. And, and then put a trail, uh, a walking path trail, if you will, that, you know, 10 feet wide or something between along the, along our property line, that our property, and then through their property, essentially, which would be our Cumar property, so that we have access to the shopping center at Peakey's from our town, as opposed to having to go down Oakwood. So you're talking about down <coughs> Naren Street to the end of Naren, across the vacant property, and then staying on the west side of the creek and not crossing Correct. the creek? Correct. Not having to build a bridge? Correct. No bridge. And when we talked about that, I know the only concern is the wet, how wet it is and how much we would have to build up and what we'd have to put sure, into it. Sure, you, you may need to put in some small uh, bridge-like structure, I guess, if you will, through that. There's like a, it's a bit of a low area, um, the property that's behind our village's property between us and, and Beakey's. It's a low area, so you might need to put in something that's elevated, but again, it's not a $100,000 bridge. You can do it very cost effectively. So I guess I I would really like to see us at least investigate that route and to see if those people would be interested in selling some small piece of their property in the back and, and to see what it would take to, to put in that path because that path to me seems like a whole lot better than, than staying on the shoulder. I saw two kids the other day riding their bikes along the side of Oakwood and even if there was a six foot shoulder there, it's still dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's got some merit to it. And I know we've discussed that route. Has anybody actually talked to them about it? No. Probably not. Okay. No. Keep me in the pull the driveway. Because I know John's brought it up many times about using that near and but I yeah. don't know if anybody's ever actually talked to them. We've been too busy being preoccupied changing horses in the middle of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> a good way to put it. <clears throat> but I, I'd be happy to <laughs> initiate that dialogue if the council would like that to be investigated yeah I guess to I would see if it's even an action yeah so. to see if they'd be willing to sell a piece of the property and if they would be then I don't know if it's if it's five hundred dollars to to row to figure out okay here's what we're looking at doing what does it cost to do this type of project and then once once we know how much it costs then figure out you know do we have the money for it or is there a grant or something else feasibility analysis yeah we can write a grant you know, and again, even the, the, the folks who own the, the Beakey's complex, you know, would, you know, would they be willing to fund part of that because it helps with access, you know, community and improvement kind of a thing? Yeah, Groveland Township also has a, a piece of the action there that we have to contend with as well. Sure. Huh? Yeah, we can explore that. Okay. <coughs> Then the last item I wanted to apprise the council of was that uh, you'll recall last month we had our uh, audit presentation from Abraham and Gaffney. Uh, there was a management letter that uh, we received that uh, required some corrective action plans to be developed. I've included a copy of the letter I submitted to the state for your review. And as a result of uh, that, uh, one of the uh, or several of the requirements are this that uh, uh, the village adopt some new policies and procedures and I'll be submitting some of those for your review over the next couple of months so that concludes my report mr. president it's been a very uh, interesting first month on the job uh, every day is a, a new adventure so, so then uh, at this po at this point, you're not planning to uh, elaborate on item B and C. Well, actually, uh, I'll take this opportunity to segue to that. Okay. <laughs> for uh, uh, especially for the benefit of our new uh, council members, uh, we uh, provided copies of the proposed rules and procedures for the village council, as well as the purchasing and contracting policies. Um, you know, I'd like to encourage. Uh, all the members now over the next couple of weeks to review those documents 
and uh, provide some feedback. Uh, we've had some uh, initial feedback from one or two folks on the uh, uh, proposed rules and procedures, <coughs> uh, but uh, again, for the, you know, the new folks and collectively, uh, especially with uh, me coming on board as the new village manager, uh, we want to get our arms around these uh, documents and uh, tweak them, get them uh, to the level that we want to uh, be in a position to adopt them formally in the next month or two. And with that, I'll uh, yield the floor to you, Mr. President. So I guess what uh, <clears throat> I think would be appropriate, <clears throat> since we do have a only a short window of time between this meeting and our next meeting, which is set for December 12th. 12th. It would be a good opportunity if we could take some time and review uh, this <coughs> proposed rules and procedures, jot down questions, comments, submit them to the village manager. If you have questions, concerns, a lot of these uh, items are restatements and clarifications of general village law that are found in extremely small print in large binders in our <coughs> office that are not readily accessible. In the governing? In the governing? Oh, yeah. 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 So you'll see some of these things that are very familiar, and then you'll see some updating <laughs> items such as uh, being able to entertain perhaps the idea of having a vote without a member being present. By electronic means, with good reason naturally. We ran into some issues this summer uh, with uh, <coughs> trying to make a quorum <coughs> with people on vacation, etc and which delayed some of our actions. So, you know, using electronic devices and so on and so forth in this day and age is, is being embraced by certain municipalities. So maybe something that we want to consider as well. Same thing with purchasing and contracting policy procedure. <coughs> If you've not read, read this, I think that perhaps we might be able to take action on this in December, on the purchasing one. So uh, if you would, uh, council members, please review both of those when you're not shopping online for Christmas. I mean, or shopping small in your local businesses. <laughs> Okay. I've got my stuff all out of order now. Any other items to bring before council? <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. Two months ago. <laughs> Support. Support. Well, I guess I made it. To make it. Oh, so move. <laughs> <laughs> I move to adjourn. <laughs> The DDA bylaws were just informational. Yeah, yeah. We have a motion uh, to adjourn by will supported by Councilman Dylas. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Were we supposed to do acknowledge this at all?